Welcome and thanks so much for joining us here on the Owatonna Today Show on this Monday, February 20th. I'm Deb Gillard, your host of the program. We've got a great show and a great week coming up for you this week on our Owatonna Today programs. And of course, you are finding us perhaps out on the internet on blip.tv. I know you can get there also through Google, kind of wind your way around if you want to do it that way. Look for Owatonna Today Show and Leanne will always have several weeks of programs archived for you there. And of course, if you're here with us locally in the Owatonna area, you are finding us on Charter Cable TV Channel 8. If you would like to get information to us, please just take note of our cell phone numbers on the screen throughout the course of the program. Our email address is there as well. We look for things from you like ideas for guests and show topics and information that we pass along at the end of the program. As I mentioned, a very good show coming up for you today. First of all, we'll be heading out on location. Uh, Leanne was on location with Eric Eitrim and Chris Harris for the uh, upcoming Owatonna High School musical, How to Succeed in Business Without Even Trying. And you're going to get a treat. It's going to open up with a great musical number for you to get a little taste of what you're going to see when you go to the production. Following that, a little bit later on in our program, we'll be back in studio to talk with a couple of women from the Crisis Resource Center and see what's going on there. So we'll take this break for our supporters, and we'll be heading out to OHS. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Jody Voison with the staff at Fairview Animal Medical Center, your other family doctor. Fairview Animal Medical Center is a proud supporter of the Oatana Today Show. Live full, live well, live long. The mission of the Oatana Senior Place is to involve, enrich, and empower adults 50 years of age or better to live as independently as possible in our communities. We do this by promoting the wellness of adults 50 years of age or better through a recreational, educational, and social opportunities, as well as being a referral source for services available within our service area. Activities and programming of the service center emphasize creating, maintaining independence in all phases of life. Please come and join us today. Hi, we're Mark and Becky Stevens of the Oatana Pizza Ranch. And we support the Oatana Today Show. Deep down under our skins, there is flesh and blood. We're all brothers. Some of us are uncles. Now you may join the ox, my friends, and I may join the Shriners, and other men may.
It's Leanne on the go for the Otana Today Show, and we are here at the OHS Auditorium with two very distinguished OHS instructors. Yeah, <laughs> and they keep looking around their shoulders. Who is it? Are those guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here with Eric Eitrim, the artistic director, and with Chris Harris, Chris Harris, the music director for the upcoming. Uh, OHS Winter Musical and Eric tell us all about it we just saw this wonderful number and I think a lot of our viewers can guess what show it is you're doing but uh, uh, let called, us in on the secret it's called how to succeed in business without really trying and the show focuses mainly on the character of Pierpont Finch J. Pierpont Finch who is uh, discovered this book that uh, tells him all of the secrets of succeeding in business without having to really do anything at all um, we've, uh, we've corralled Todd Hale to uh, do the book voice for us, so the audience will hear Todd <laughs> Hale reading these secrets out to us as the, as the show goes on. And it's all about how he gets uh, through um, kind of trickery up through the corporate ladder to the highest levels. And uh, he, he wins his way up and, and finds a girl and falls in love, and uh, just like every good musical, <laughs> and ends happily ever after Yay. with some songs in between. Yes. So. And it's we'll a lot of fun. We'll look forward to hearing the dulcet tones of Mr. Hale here. Oh, yes. <laughs> He'll take you right back to the Steel County for you. Oh, yes. Yeah, it will. Why did you choose this particular musical? Well, it seemed, uh, first of all, we had, uh, it seemed like we had the students to do this one this year. Um, we have a very strong group of guys this year, and so we picked a show that, that really uh, kind of featured them and yet had some things for girls to do as well. So uh, it also seemed topical with uh, the economy being what it has been, kind of, mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, it, it's, uh, it's got some real poignant things to say, I think. It was our sadistic side coming out maybe a little bit, too. <laughs> Just uh, yeah. to the, the, the whole comedy, you know, if you can't laugh at, at yourself and your situation, you know. Uh, so that was part of it, too. It was yeah. timely. Okay, yeah. all right. And how have, uh, how have your actors and actresses um, adjusted to having to wear suits on stage, dresses on stage, and yeah. high heels. That's really a departure yeah, from your normal everyday wear. One of the first things I told them was that they all had to have these certain kinds of shoes, and guys are going to have to wear dress shoes, and girls are going to have to wear heels, and they need to get them as soon as possible because they were going to be dancing, just like you saw in that right, number. Right. And uh, you move a little differently when you get, get those shoes on. It, it, uh, it really does change the way you move around the stage, especially with a slippery stage like this. So we've, we've had them uh, rehearsing in those shoes for quite a while, and uh, they're getting used to it. They still, the girls still complain about the heels that they hurt, <laughs> and uh, they look for any opportunity to take them off. But uh, they, they've adjusted well to it, and um, I think they're better behaved when they're in costume, I think. But it changes their whole demeanor. Especially with that tie around them. Maybe that should right? be the uniform yeah, for OHS. Uniform. We should, our school uniform should be 50s go. attire, suits and and, and dresses. Why not? Why right. not? Yeah. Chris, tell us what have some of the challenges been musically? Well, right away, I would say this is one of the toughest uh, pit pit uh, books that we've had to play from. I mean, you can't. If you could look at it, you'd see that you can't go two measures without tons of accidentals all over the place. So, from just a purely technique. Te uh, technical perspective, um, it's an extremely challenging show for the pit. Uh, and from a conductor standpoint, you know, there's lots of changes, two, four, three, uh, recitative, back to in tempo. And so it's been uh, a lot of hard work trying to work that out. And so what takes a lot of time is just getting used to how the actors are going to sing it and trying to get the timing mm -hmm. down and things like that. So um, it's been really challenging and I'm looking forward to these uh, starting tonight, this rehearsal, and the next five or so, four or five, just to get ready, uh, just to get that timing down and to get the, the pit comfortable with the actors and vice versa. So it's been really challenging, but um, as always, the kids seem to rise to that challenge and that's, mm -hmm. it's really fun to see that growth. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's a musical and it's fun and people come to see it, but what they may not realize is that this is very educational. Uh, the, where, from where they start to where they end up is just, uh, it's great to see. So Terrific. Well, we just have a minute left of the interview, so Eric, please tell us when we will get to see how to succeed in business without really trying. Well, it opens Thursday, uh, February 23rd at 7 o'clock here at the OHS Auditorium. It runs Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then a Sunday matinee at 1.30. Um, I should also mention that we've been assisted very ably by uh, uh, Cindy Price, who's been doing the choreography okay. for us. And that was a great choreography for that oh, number that you. we just saw. That was wonderful. Thank you. And uh, Doc Grauberger has instructed this uh, enormous set behind us, complete with working elevators and uh, oh, a nine-foot uh, level behind our heads here. So. Wow. Uh, 
there's a, a ton of effort that's gone on both on stage and in the pit off stage and then by our student crew and, and others off stage and, and Polly Shives has helped us out with costumes a lot we've been able to access costumes at LTO and and we've had members in the community make a few things for us so it, there really has been a great effort by lots and lots of people to put this together not just the, the people you see on stage Perfect. and how do we get tickets tickets are available online you can go to the high school's webpage and click on show ticks for number four u letter u dot com and it'll take you to our, our website to get tickets or you can come to the door before the show an hour before the show opens they'll they'll start selling tickets or if you have time during the school day you can go see uh, Kurt Matichek from 8 a.m. to 11:30 at the tennis court doors in front of by the high school okay great so lots of opportunities to get yeah. tickets we look forward to seeing the musical coming up All this right. weekend and uh, gentlemen break a leg well thank you very much thank you. Hi, this is Dave Efforts with TPS Insurance, and we are proud supporters of the Owatonna Today Show. Hello, I'm Dr. Wilbert Pino, and I'm the new orthopedic surgeon at the Mayo Health Systems Owatonna Clinic. I'm a general orthopedic surgeon who relocated here with my family starting January 9th. My original specialty are uh, pediatric and spine surgery, and I do uh, general orthopedic surgery as well. I look forward to meeting you and um, be of a service to you if you have any orthopedic needs. Hi, I'm Doug Johnson with the Otana Business Incubator. We're here to help small businesses start and to grow. We're a proud sponsor of the Otana Today Show. I didn't just want another job, I wanted a career, so I expressed myself. I was new to town and I didn't know where to turn for a job, so I decided to express myself. I decided to express myself, and they helped find the right career for me. Express Employment Professionals is in contact with thousands of companies in need of quality employees. Come in now and get the job you deserve. Express yourself today. Did you know that it is illegal in the city of Oatana to host or allow a gathering where minors will be consuming alcoholic beverages on your property or in your residence? Did you know it is illegal to provide minors with alcohol unless they are your own kids, in your own home, and you are present? Underage drinking leads to increased risks of future chemical dependency, engaging in more serious criminal activity, and becoming a victim of a crime. Please help keep our kids and our community safe by not encouraging, hosting, or allowing underage drinking. This is a message from the Oatana Police Department and the Safe and Drug Free Coalition of Steele County. Hi, I'm Stormy Trom, reminding you that March is Food Share Month. Please join us for the 19th Annual Hometown Sampler Concert at the Little Theater of Owatonna on March 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, benefiting the Steele County Food Shelf. Enjoy the musical offerings of the Bad Tangerines, the Gogs, Hot and Bothered, and the Mile 5 Band. Admission to the Hometown Sampler is a cash or food donation to the Steele County Food Shelf. Our goal is to raise $92,000 during the month of March. Help us kick off Food Share Month by attending the Hometown Sampler. Welcome back, and thanks again so much for joining us on this Monday, February 20th. Did you enjoy your little taste of the musical? It looks like it's going to be amazing, so I, I hope we'll see you there. It looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. We welcome in studio, as I mentioned, two women from the Crisis Resource Center. Hi. We welcome Lori Pfeiffer. Hi, Lori. Hi. And Allie Gibbs. How are you? Good. Lori's a little new to our program, and Allie's been here before, so we're going to get to know you just a little bit before we talk about all the things that we would like to. What brings you here to the Owatonna and Steel County area, Lori? Well, for the last three years, I've been in Rochester at the Women's Shelter. Okay. They're working there, and then a position opened up here in Steel County, and I live in Bloomin Prairie, so it's a, a lot closer for me to drive. And okay. It's a little more close to home. Where are you originally from? I uh, grew up down in Illinois. Oh, and, really? Yeah, so okay. I'm kind of a, a vagabond. All right. But, a little um, traveling around little, and little eventually around. got and you here. Here I am. And we're <laughs> glad to have you. Thank you. And the area of the Crisis Resource Center that you are in charge of is? Uh, sexual Assault Program Coordinator. Okay. And we're going to be getting to a little bit of information on that, too. Welcome back to Allie. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. And you are in charge of the... Abused Children's know, Program like, Coordinator. There you go. There's so many titles and things that change. <laughs> and I they're let lengthy. People just, yeah. <laughs> I let people reintroduce themselves a lot of times if they're, if they're back on. But welcome back. And we're here to talk about two things. We're a little ahead um, here at, in late February. We want to mention that April is... Uh, Child Abuse Prevention Month mm -hmm. and Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Did I get yes. those right, ladies? Yes. Okay. 
Um, so let's talk about both events, but let's start with uh, Allie, and we want to talk about your area of the program. If we can just kind of uh, remind our viewers of what you do, who you serve, and maybe some, maybe how many have been served in your area of the okay. Resource Center. Um, we work with children 18 and under for any type of domestic violence. Um, sexual assault would be part of Lori's program. Um, so domestic violence um, that involves children, if the children are present, child neglect, child physical abuse, harassment, and even under that would fall um, teen dating abuse. Okay. Sometimes other things come up, you know, the harassment can be kind of a broad mm -hmm. word to, to cover a lot of different things. Um, so we help all of those. Um, uh, the biggest one is probably children involved in a domestic violence situation in the home. Okay. And how many of this may not be something that most of our viewers know? I think we were talking a little bit ahead of time. People will ask you, well, how many, how many kids, how many children have you helped? Is it five? Is it 400? Is it, you know, where, where does it fall? Um, last year, in, in Steel, well, some of the people we work with end up being from outside of Steel County, but majority okay. at Steel County. Um, was 252 children under 18, oh my goodness. and 112 of those were boys. So it's about half and half. Okay, okay. And you serve all of Steele County? Yep, okay. yep. The majority um, is from Owatonna because that's the biggest town in Steele County. Mm -hmm. But 10 of those were Blooming Prairie, 20 from Medford, um, and then some from Allendale and other small areas around. Okay. It's both unfortunate and but important to note that this is not just isolated to any mm -hmm. one area that it is unfortunately widespread and even throughout our county but yep. the, the resource center is here to help when someone calls um, or refers somebody to call what what kind of questions or what what do you do to help them through things at the resource center particularly in your area our biggest concern is um, whatever they need help with. So if someone calls and they don't have somewhere safe to sleep that night, okay. or um, they just they want a safety plan, you know, maybe the person who's hurting them or their family member doesn't live in the home, but they're still concerned that there's a safety issue. So right. we'll help them with a safety plan or an order for protection or restraining order. Um, you know, maybe they're removed from the situation by now, but they still need some ongoing support. So okay. we have. A support group for women and a support group for children ages 4 to 12. Um, so it's just a variety of, of different things. Whatever their needs are, we want to help them meet those needs. Okay. We want to help them make informed decisions. So we just, you know, we want to give them as much information as we can and let them decide what the best thing to do is for their family. Okay. So it could be the very immediate needs mm -hmm. to Absolutely. much more ongoing. You have an event coming up, um, as do. always, in the month of April we to uh, acknowledge, I guess, and commemorate this uh, Child Abuse Prevention Month. And it is happening when? Um, Wednesday, April 4th okay. at noon at the Oatana Eagles is our annual Healing the Hearts of Our Children luncheon. Um, you know, we, we come and, and invite community members to join us and um, meet, meet at the Eagles. Okay. and Find we'll out a little bit more about what you do. and mm -hmm. okay. We'll have a lunch and then about, you know, halfway through the hour, so 1230 or so, we'll have a speaker um, start giving their presentation. Um, and this year we have Victor Veith who's sp speaking about the five obstacles that prevent us from ending abuse. So kind of these things we need to overcome or accomplish in order to end abuse and, and specifically child abuse. Okay. All right. Sounds very interesting. You have some raffle prizes, we do. good things, fun things going on during the event as well. Many local businesses and community members have been very generous and donated um, a, a great variety of gift certificates, products, um, you know, cookies and, and all kinds of good things. And so we have raffle tickets for $2 each going towards, um, again, this is a fundraiser event, so going towards that same cause. And then the raffle will be done the day after the luncheon. Okay. So people can buy tickets up until the luncheon, at the luncheon, and then we'll do the drawing the next day. Um, nobody needs to be present to win, so anybody can buy a ticket. Um, and we'll also have a silent auction at the luncheon. Okay. And I know you're looking for a good attendance at the luncheon yes. too. How does somebody get tickets now? Give us a call, 451-1202, um, and or stop by our office. We can also do them by mail, but the easiest way would just be probably to give us a call. And tickets are available through Friday, March 23rd, so okay. we've got some time yet to buy those tickets. Okay. 
Well, we want to make sure we allow a little bit of time here for Lori also to talk about her area. Um, Sexual Assault Awareness Month is also in the month of April, yes. and so you will be acknowledging that. And also, we want to let people know about some training that's coming up too. But right. just so that in here again, kind of along the same lines that we were talking with Allie, if you can give us some kind of statistics, ideas right. to um, who is served and how are they served through the Resource Center. Well, last year we served um, 61 victims of sexual assault, and that okay. includes men and women. There were nine men and 52 women, and 46 of them were from Owatonna. Okay. Um, 35 of them are, were under age 18, so we serve all age ranges. Um, you know, the abused children sort of overlaps with the sexual assault program. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I would come in and serve the children that, that are um, molested, sexually assaulted, and, as, and women. Okay. So all the way up, in okay. all age ranges. Wow, and this is, again, throughout our county? Throughout Steele County. Okay, all right. Some amazing statistics, really, and it's, kind it's of huge. blow it's your mind, problem. doesn't it? it yes. and, and I and I know, and we can't shut the door to that. We no. have to be aware that no. it's going on. No. So you're out there, and when we say Sexual Assault Awareness Month, what is it? What are some of the main things you would like people to know or to remember? Well, just that um, you know, every two minutes, somebody in the United States is sexually assaulted. Mm. Um, it's every two minutes. We've been here for you know seven, eight minutes, and that's that's four people who've been sexually assaulted, uh -huh. and that's you know that's our our friends and our family, that's men, that's women, our sisters, our mothers, our, our children. It's, it happens all around us and it, and it, it doesn't stop. Those are scary statistics. Yep. Also along the same lines that I talked with Allie too, what can someone expect when they um, call into the Crisis Resource Center and you're there to help them? What, what well, are your... We're there, services? thanks to our volunteers, we're there 24 hours a day. If, okay. if the phone rings, a human is going to answer it 24 hours a day. Um, if, if, it, if the, we get a call to the emergency room, as advocates, we'll go out to the emergency room. We will assist somebody in, in the exam process. Um, we can help them throughout um, getting a harassment restraining order against somebody. We'll help them through the court proceedings. We'll help them deal with law enforcement, with county attorneys, and, and everything. We're there mm. from step one until the process is finished. Wow, and that's a lot of emotional that's, it's huge. issues it's that huge. you're dealing with, right. too. So. We, um, you spoke about your volunteers, and that's a very important piece, very I think, important. of the Crisis Resource Center. Yes. There is some upcoming training. There is. In, in March, I, th I believe it's the second week of March, okay. we're going to have a um, training for volunteers. And if anybody's interested, it's a 40-hour training. It's free. Um, and all we ask is, after the training is complete, that our volunteers pick up one shift a month. Okay. And we ask that our volunteers stand. But without our volunteers, we can't have a human answering the phone 24 hours a day. Um, we need to be able to serve victims when the abuse happens. Okay. And um, so we need our volunteers. They're very important. We appreciate them so much. Well, if you're out there and you feel like you can help and would like to take part in the training, you guys have a Twitter. Yes, you're on Twitter, Twitter. <laughs> and Facebook. I think we've got that there. I think they can probably just look for you. Yep. Correct. Yes, um, under Crisis Resource Center, maybe of Steele County. Yes. Okay. Um, phone number, as we mentioned before, four five one one two zero two. If you've got any questions about what either Lori or Allie do, or know somebody that needs help, or certainly want to be a part of the events or the months, um, to give you a call. And thank you so much for the work that you thank do you. and for joining us today. Thank you. Okay. Good luck with the event. Okay. okay thanks. We'll take a break for our supporters, and we'll be back to wrap it up for today. Hi, Warren Abraham, Abraham Consulting Technologies, your one-stop technology shop. We support the Otana Today Show. Hello, I'm Sean McNulty with the Sterling House Assisted Living, a part of Brookdale Senior Living. Our mission is to enrich the lives of those we serve with compassion, respect, excellence, and integrity. We are a proud sponsor of the Owatonna Today Show. Hi, I'm Elaine Benson, and I play Muriel Eubanks. And I'm Steve Searle, and I play at Lawrence and Jameson in LTO's current production of Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, directed by Julianus Kozaciak and sponsored by the Wanger Foundation. 
Performances of Dirty Rotten Scoundrels will be held Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, February 16th, 17th, and 18th at 7.30 p.m., with a matinee on Sunday, February 19th at 2 p.m. And again the following Thursday through Saturday, February 23rd, 24th, and 25th at 7.30 p.m. Tickets are available at the LTO box office by calling 451-0764. Don't miss LTO's production of Dirty, Dirty Rotten, Rotten Scoundrels. Scoundrels. Welcome back. Thanks so much for joining us here on this Monday, February 20th. We're going to wrap it up today by, well, first of all, we, we definitely want to welcome back Steel County Food Shelf as a supporter of our, our program, so we will be uh, giving you some more information about them. The Owatonna Eagles wants to thank everyone who participated in their recent 50th annual cancer auction. A great group of volunteers, contributors, bidders, and donations raised a grand total of $30,500 for cancer research and related pro projects. And we, of course, had them on the program. It's always nice to hear how those events go um, after we have let you know about them. Coming up this Saturday, February 25th, Riverbend Nature Center, Na Riverbend Nature Center naturalist Barbara Hurley uh, will be available from 2 to 3.30 p.m. to find out more about bugs in winter. Participants will start inside the Interpretive Center and then move outside after that. You can call the Riverbend Nature Center for more information. Coming up on Wednesday's program, please join us. We will have for you Summit Mortgage and the Safe and Drug-Free Coalition. We will see you then.